Hey, I'm Daryl Thompson, and today I'm going to give you a level two lesson on the guitar solo in None But Jesus by Hillsong United. And afterwards, I'm going to give you the best way for you to approach any guitar solo. The guitar solo in None But Jesus is ranked among the top guitar solos in worship music. And it's not because it's a particularly difficult guitar solo to play, but more because of how effective it is in the role it plays in the whole song. To help us with what role a guitar solo plays in the song, let's go to our expert. Well, thank you, Daryl. Yes, the, uh, the solo or instrumental break is derived from the Italian word solo, which means alone. And that is quite an apt term for what a guitarist is doing on stage as everybody watches them strut their stuff. Now, to understand the purpose of a solo, it is important to understand that every section of a song plays a part in the bigger picture of the song. You see, a song is about telling a story. And so each section of that song will differ musically to create a sense of tension, building, excitement, and so that story is being told. And this is exactly the same with the solo, whether it's being played by a guitar, a saxophone, or a cowbell. Now, as the solo comes, what happens is the listener is taken slightly off the beaten path taken in a different direction to where the song was going so that their air is given a bit of a break. I'm sorry, I'm losing my breath because I'm so excited about the subject. And so as they go to the solo and they listen to the solo, they are brought back whether to a part that they've heard before or a brand new part. And what happens when they come to this new part or this part they've heard before, there is a heightened sense of excitement, a heightened sense of tension, and the solo has done its job very well. Now, when it comes to learning a solo in these modern days, we often find in music videos that what we see being filmed in a live environment is very much different to what we hear. And that is because what was filmed in a live environment is different to what was recorded in a studio environment after the live event. And so because of that, there is often a dissimilarity between what we see and what we hear. Now, I would like to provide an example for you of what this can look and sound like. Thank you. Before we get stuck into the solo, let me talk about how the solo feels. It's definitely laid back. And so what you want to do is play each of the notes in the solo that I'll show you now a little bit behind the beat, which creates the sense of laziness. I spoke about this in my lesson one or level one of the same song, which you can check out if you need some help with what this should feel like. So playing in the, ski, uh, the key of C major, since the song is in the key of C major, I start on the fifth fret of the B string. Now I'm playing through a clean channel on my amp, uh, but of course in the recording, the guitar is quite overdriven. Uh, there is some delay, like a little bit maybe, just to create some ambience and some reverb. And I'm playing on the neck pickup, which is where my humbucker is sitting. Um, but what you get with this song, the song is that the guitar is quite warm. It's got a tack to it, but it's got warmth as well. So try your neck pickup, try and give, it, give yourself some bottom end tone on your effects, on your uh, guitar amp and see if you can get that warmth that uh, they have in Hillsong United's version of the song. So let's go again. You've got this first phrase. And landing on the D note here on the G string, that note needs to sustain before the next part of the phrase. Now while you're sustaining a note, there are a few things that you can do. One of them is vibrato. So let's talk about vibrato for a second. You have what's called wide vibrato, which is like this. And it can go as wide as you want to stretch the, finger, uh, the strings, but that might be a little bit of overkill for this kind of song. So just to keep in mind, if you're going to do wide vibrato, your thumb is over the top to help you with the leverage. Yeah, then you could try classical vibrato, which is side to side. 
and that might be a little bit quick. You can slow it down. Or I like to use what Steve Vai has developed, which is circular vibrato, which is exactly what it sounds like. Just going around in circles. Nice and wide variations in pitch and nice and slow, nice and subtle. So I think that's ideal for this song. Uh, or you could just not use any vibrato at all. Yeah, so there we go. The notes so far. The next phrase is... And that is using a technique called barring your first finger. So over your G and your B string, you're going to... Your first finger is barring the G string, putting pressure down on the G string so it rings. But then when you go to play the notes on the B string, your first finger is lifting off the G string and now applying pressure to the B string. Yeah. And then you're going to shift your first finger so it now bars the D string as well on the fifth fret. And again, you are on the fifth fret of the D string on the A note. And there's another sustained note. You can again apply vibrato as you, uh, if you want to. What I hear on the recording is that this note is sl slid down from. It's, <laughs> it's, he slides down. That's better English. So here we go again. There you go. Now that's the basis of the solo. There are some variations around that, but that's the basic sound or part that you'll have played through the solo. Now for the next part, and this starts with the same phrase that we had in the first part of the solo as it started, the same. Landing on that D, sustaining it, but then we get what's, what sounds like a country lick, and this involves sixth intervals. It sounds like this. Now, sixth intervals, I'll explain it before I talk about how the timing of this works. A sixth interval is simply the distance between one note and the other. And so we're talking about the one note being played here, and the note that's being played next to it or with it is six intervals, six steps, six notes up the scale. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, of course, the same thing for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So all of these notes are six intervals away from each other. And the way that you would play it, counting it out, is three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three. Again, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three. You want to make sure that you're landing the notes in the right place as you count in sixteenth notes. So. This, this goes like this, we've talked about sixth intervals, and by the time you get to this one, there's some vibrato that you need to add to this piece. Now before I talk about the vibrato that you add at the end of this phrase, you can play this in two different ways. You can use your pick only, and you can use your pick and your finger, which is called hybrid picking. Hybrid picking is using your pick and your finger, you can strum through chords, or at least pick through chords, or you can do this. You see, I'm using my finger and my, my pick and my finger. Now, what you'll get in terms of sound and tone is that your pick will produce a brighter sound and it is a lot easier to produce volume as well. Whereas your finger will produce a warmer tone, but you have to pick a bit harder to get the same volume. Now, if you listen to the recording, you'll hear that the, the note being played here and that note are the same volume. So chances are that a pick is being used. And if you look at the uh, the video, the music video, you'll see that the guitarist is using their pick as well. But now I want to just warn you, this, this music video is a case of the, the film is done live, but the audio has been recorded in a studio after the filming. So rather than trusting what you can see, trust what you can hear. Oh, sorry. Then you've got this vibrato piece at the end, and to help you with that, um, it's kind of this wide vibrato technique I talked about earlier. The key to that is your thumb is over the top of the neck so that you can pull the strings up. But something else that will help you is if you recognize your third and your fourth fingers are your weakest fingers, you want to make sure that you're helping them. So pull, put your other fingers, claw your other fingers on the guitar neck as well so that when you hit the strings, you can, you can pull the strings up and give up that vibrato. Go. 
Then the last part of the solo is this, going back to this first phrase. Back to, which I explained in the beginning. And finally we've got landing on the D notes. So that's a whole bunch of you barring your first finger over the strings. Going to this G notes. And then the, the solo doesn't finish on the first uh, first counts of the next bar. It doesn't land on the, the one note of the, um, the solo. But uh, the guitarist goes to an A minor chord. Now this might be what you need to do if you are the only guitarist in a band. So you would finish the solo here. Yep, you could just go. And the, the rest of the band plays the chords for you. Now something to keep in mind is that when you are going to play a guitar solo, you wanna pump yourself through the sound system. So a good way to do that is to either have a pedal, like a, a, a gain or booster, a gain booster pedal, something that helps you turn up the volume. So when you get to the solo, you just put the pedal on and you play slightly louder than you did before. And then when you finish the solo, you turn the pedal off again and you're back to your previous volume. Either that or you have a sound technician who knows the song well enough to recognize when the part is coming, when they need to push you up in the mix and then they pull you back down again afterwards. And that just makes for effective, uh, just makes that, that emotion, brings that emotion. The volume of your guitar will bring that emotion that the solo is trying to achieve in the song. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play through the solo at a slower speed, something that you can practice along with until you've got it down, and then you can uh, practice on your own at faster speeds until you get it to the right speed, the concert speed. Now let me talk with you about how to learn a solo. Uh, I learned this lesson a, a while ago when I used to play in a gig band. We were learning the song Black Cats by Janet Jackson, which is a great song, got a great riff. And off went, I went, I went home with the copy of the song, put it on my CD player, pressed play, heard the first three notes and then worked out those three notes on the guitar. Then press play again, heard the next three notes, <laughs> the next three notes, although the next three notes were a bit faster than the last one, so I had to play it a few times, but eventually I heard it and I worked it on my guitar, and I did this for about uh, five minutes. And then when I tried to think of how the first few notes went again, I remembered where they were on the neck, but I couldn't remember what they sound like. I couldn't remember the way the, 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 the solo was phrased, and so I had to go all the way back to the beginning. I at least had where those notes are being played, but I had to listen to the solo again, and I did this again and again, trying to get, it, get through a 30 second solo, which isn't amazingly long, but it's long enough to spend hours learning the solo this way. So what did I learn from that process? I learned that the best thing to do when you have to learn a guitar solo is listen to it. Listen to it again and again and again until you can memorize what that solo sounds like. It becomes like a melody. You could even sing it. And what helps you with that is that when you sit down to work out where, where those notes are that you've heard, are placed on the guitar, you're not concerned about the phrasing because you know where the phrasing is. You know where the notes come after each other. So all you're doing is learning where the notes are being placed on the guitar. And that makes for much easier, a much easier time when you're learning a solo. Now as you grow in your musical ability, the aim is for you to get to the place where your, your musical air, your ability to remember things and to recall uh, certain tunes and solos and, and notes and pitches, pitch variations, things like that, that should get stronger. So what happens is when you want to practice a song, the first thing you do is you listen to it. You get it in you. And then you will get better and better at not only being able to play the guitar, play that song, being, but being able to hear what's in your head and transfer it to your guitar. Which means you're no longer sitting and working out the chords all the time and trying to remember it was A and it was B, B minor. What's happening is you hear something and straight away you know because you're in the key of D, 
that's the sixth chord, we're gonna go to the B minor. And off you go to the B minor because you can hear the B minor in your head. You've got the recording in your head and you know how to transfer what you hear to your guitar. Now that's gonna take you knowing some music theory, things like Nashville number system um, and practicing with that and being able to identify chords and intervals and pitch variations, etc. But you can get there with time. That will make practicing a lot easier when you think of how many songs you need to learn for a worship set or how many songs you need to know in the current church song roster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that must be the end of our level two video, which we hope you enjoyed. Uh, please stay tuned for our level three video on the same song to help you reach your next level of awesome.